Hello. We're live. Uh, I have a new webcam tonight, so let me know if you like it. Does it look good? Does it sound good? Um, if there's no sound, let me know. If it goes in and out, just give me some tech support throughout this situation. Um, the volume should still be coming through here, so if you can't hear me, let me know. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about veganism and burnout. And it's something that vegans kind of face a lot. There's a lot of stuff kind of being thrown at you from the world, right? There's so much that you're taking on. So it's really common that there are some things that can contribute to that. So I thought it would be good. We'll kind of talk about what that looks like, like what is burnout and um, what contributes to burnout and the things that you can do to kind of, you know, reinvigorate yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Hope. It's always uh, comforting to know, especially since I'm trying the new webcam, that, uh, that it's working. So, um, burnout, right? Like, I think anybody knows really what, what burnout is. But when it comes to veganism, it's often referred as, like, compassion fatigue. And it most often, you'll see that in people that are activists. But it's not always um, activists that feel burnt out, right? There's so many things that kind of can come into play to just drain on you and make you kind of feel like, is this really worth it? Should I still be doing this? And, you know, do I really care about this? So I thought we would go into some of those things that contribute and then we can go through, you know, a little bit of a tool belt of what we can do to kind of overcome them and everybody's situation is going to be slightly different and if you have something you want to talk about specifically comment let me know and we can dive into that so i know one source for me that's really hard to, to deal with when you're going vegan is that people are unwilling to understand or to learn about veganism it's to the point often where people are, are literally like sticking their head in the sand and it's such a frustrating thing to be on and especially if you're someone who is really excited and passionate about veganism and you want to share these things that you've discovered because you didn't know this information either and if everybody knew they would make different choices but there's this like veil that we try and like put up and I know that I was guilty of doing the same thing at one point where I was like, oh, I know what happens in slaughterhouses, like, I don't need to see that, or um, that can't be healthy, right? Like, really just being dismissive and not trying to understand and not being willing to when I was exposed to it and, and talking to people. So that's something that's really hard going vegan to, to deal with, and it can drain on you. Um, especially when you see those people that aren't willing to like have those discussions with you and they're struggling, right? Like maybe with their health or they're trying a bunch of fad diets or maybe, you know, they're really environmentally conscious or they are involved in their animal shelters. But as soon as you bring up veganism, they're closed off. And so like trying to make that connection can be really hard. And when you're trying to connect with people all the time and they're not returning that connection, that's, draining that's uh alienating so it's understandable that again you would create burnout and i'm going to just really focus on on the bad stuff in the beginning right like what contributes to it and then we can like talk about more some things that um can help overcome it so as i mentioned earlier activists like those that are really like on the ground kind of working with the animals experience it at the highest level because they're watching these animals some of them daily because they're so active but day in and day out you know that they're watching them suffer um some of them do bear witness and that's draining right to see these animals and there's nothing you can do and you're very powerless and again people aren't listening to you and witnessing that it just affects your mental health it affects your your well-being and you start to kind of wonder right like what am i doing this for what's the point of all this and you know there's just thing after thing that builds up and i think it's important to kind of talk about these because i don't want people to feel alone or like others don't understand and then sometimes it's really easy in the vegan community to talk about all the good things and all the benefits but not all the not so great stuff so 
let's you know really get into it so the other thing is being that friend you know maybe you're the only vegan in your friend group and you're that friend that everybody's like oh like the vegans coming and there's a lot of negativity about that and that kind of comes down to building some of those like foundations and like talking to people and being really open and standing up for yourself in the beginning. But a lot of times people don't do that kind of like foundational stuff and they're really shy about being vegan or they really absorb some of those um, opinions from others about what veganism is and how inconvenient it is. And um, it can get really hard to keep doing something when so many people are against it and so many people don't get it. Um, and you know, you kind of find yourself in a spot of not worrying about what you want, but what others want. And again, all these things really contribute to that burnout, that like overwhelm, that is this worth continuing and doing. And I'm only going to go into two more, two more things that kind of like build up this ball. And if there is more that you've experienced or that I've missed, like I said, feel free to share, feel free to comment because you're, you're not going to be alone on it. Um, but a big one that can contribute to vegans feeling really burnt out is the vegan community itself. And the vegan community is a great place. It's a great resource, but there's always those that are so worried about those that aren't doing the same as them or not doing what they consider to be enough. So, um, you know, if you I'm trying to find like a good example, right? Like if you switch to all vegan products and then someone says, well, what about palm oil? You can't be vegan if you're having palm oil. And you know, that's like a divide in the vegan community. Palm oil is a plant product. There's sustainable palm oil, but you know, some people really feel because of the deforestation and what it does to, to the animals that you shouldn't be eating that if you're vegan. So there becomes like this scenario of like trying to be perfect or trying not to upset any groups or trying to always like further your veganism and it feeling like it's not enough. And that can be a really hard and draining pattern to get into when you're at the point of, um, you know, you can't say, well, I went out for the impossible burger because you'll have people attacking you and they're from your, your own community. And that's one of the reasons that I always like talk about, you know, there's different moral grounds and you have your own compass and you need to decide what's right for you and it's not so cool to decide what's right for somebody else and that's kind of their journey and i think it's okay to like talk to people and bring awareness to topics and subjects but when it comes from a place of like talking down or telling them they're not good enough you know people absorb that and that again adds to that burnout that overwhelm that can come along with veganism and then another one is just wanting to go back, wanting it to be easy, wanting it to be simple, uh, not wanting to have to consider, not wanting to look at food labels or having to ask questions. And it's something that, you know, when people have all this other stuff contributing to that overwhelm and that burnout and that desire to just go, you know what, nothing's good enough. I'm not making a difference. Those that are in the community, don't think I'm vegan enough and I want it to be easy. I want to forget it. And this is sometimes what you, you see when people are like, oh, I did that vegan thing and you know, they're crazy and I don't like that. And people get burnt out and it's easier to kind of go, the whole thing was wrong than to kind of accept like that there's some issues with it. And I think the more that we talk about it and the more that we're aware of like some of the things that affect people, the better we can support through that. And you need to know it's not just you and um, respecting people is, is important. So hope is just re saying respecting our differences is important. So 100%, right? And I think, uh, you know, if somebody eats raw vegan and someone eats junk food vegan and someone is high carb vegan and someone is whole food plant based, right? Like there's already those differences in diet, but then there, there's more differences in terms of, um, you know, using chemicals in your home, for example, right? Like some people may use chemical cleaners in their home. Some may use like more holistic and vinegar and, you know, there's just always something you can do to further the cause and further your, and reduce your impact right so there's all these things that you can be doing always and you can get caught up in this 
sense of perfectionism mixed in with just not being good enough, not being good enough for your friends, not being good enough for your family, feeling alienated, and then not feeling good enough for some of those that are angry and vocal in the vegan community towards other vegans. So it happens, right? Like this burnout feeling. And I know for me, I had a, a big, a big feeling of burnout when I was pregnant with my son and a lot of that wasn't just the vegan community but that was also um, just where my, I, my mental health and my physical health was like I was very pregnant I was driving three hours a day for work and I just remember being so frustrated and being like I just I want a carrot muffin I can never find carrot muffins by the way <laughs> it's like my thing that I just I think I found it once ever but it just was like you know I just want a carrot muffin and me trying to like reason with myself and go does it really matter what's the difference really between veganism and vegetarianism how important is it and having these like internal dialogues of like feeling like my not my I couldn't find the right word, right? Like it's not, I don't find veganism hard, but it was just in a point where all the things collected into one experience. And it was like, is it really worth it? Is this really important? Do I actually still care about this or am I doing it because I've done it for so long? I didn't get that muffin. Um, and it was fine, right? Like, in a, but there was just this period, this few weeks where I was like, oh, being vegetarian would be easier. People don't make a big deal. But you know, especially for me, like I don't like dairy, I don't like eggs, and I dislike those the most out of all the animal products. So it just didn't make sense for me. So as someone who has kind of been, I mean, it's been seven years for me, right? And I've been working with people and everybody kind of comes from these different experiences. But so for someone who has kind of been through some of it, I thought it would be good to talk about, you know, what are some things that you can do to combat this burnout? and uh, a big one can kind of be to revisit why you went vegan and what's important to you and there's different ways of doing that right whether that's popping in a documentary or just having some quiet time to yourself to think and contemplate because we don't we don't really do that right we are always so like busy and plugged in um meditations is something that i know a lot of people are like ooh, meditations but like guided meditations and like doing some of that like you time stuff is really helpful to kind of just calm the mind and go okay like what is this am i doing something that's wrong for me or am i feeling overwhelmed and, and what can i do to change that scenario um so another thing you can do and this all depends on the type of burnout and the type of issue you're having. So if you're having an issue, for example, with being present in the vegan community and you're seeing a lot of um, footage across, like for Twitter, right? Like Twitter can have a lot of graphic footage and a lot of very outspoken vegans, which is great. But if you find that upsetting or, or triggering um, or overwhelming, right? Like there's filters you can add on Twitter, you can unfollow people, you can get off of vegan Twitter, right? Like you can unplug and take a break. So there's different things that you can do to separate yourself. But I think the most common thing for people that are newcomers is that they actually don't know any other vegans and they don't have that community, which is part of the point of this group because you, you kind of need to get out of that bubble of people that just don't get it uh, aren't willing to get it they don't want to learn about it and they have strong opinions the opposite opinion right and they have no interest in learning more and, and changing that opinion and when those are the only ones in your life and they're trying to encourage you like oh this is stupid why are you doing this don't you want to come out for drinks well we used to get wings all the time and oh well I have this but you can't eat that or you can't have that or wouldn't it be nice if you could have a piece of this cake or Right? Like you get all this coming back at you. And if you don't have those that you're connecting with, like I said, like this group is great for that or other Facebook groups, uh, social media, just even following people on Instagram and, and seeing their food and knowing that there's other like like-minded people can be super helpful in terms of like keeping your head straight and feeling a little bit more grounded and like, you know what, you're not alone. So, 
as with my story with the carrot muffin, one thing I mentioned was taking care of yourself. And if you're overwhelmed kind of in all these different places, whether it's work and you're not sleeping enough and maybe you are eating vegan, but you're not eating very well and you're trying to do everything, you're not taking care of yourself and something has to give, right? So if you're feeling overwhelmed, that's a great way to um, kind of get grounded and reconnected. Sorry, I just realized there's more comments. Concentrating on our common ground is important. Yes, health and, ooh, thanks Sage for joining us. If you have questions, like I said earlier, you weren't here, but <laughs> ask them. Okay, so um, yeah, take care of yourself because if you're not taking care of your other places, it's even easier to get overwhelmed and burnt out. Um, unplug, like I was saying earlier, and unfollow those vegan accounts that make you feel inferior, right? Whether that's intentional or not, right? If you're following an account and they only have like, I don't know, organic, loco down the street stuff, and they only clean with vinegar and you know there's just their life is is that such a perfect state that is unattainable to you and distressing to you like that's not your standard you do not have to be that person and i think it's important to understand that everybody has like a different journey and a different goal and just because someone is like this vegan right like they're so vegan and beyond veganism doesn't mean that that's where you need to go you need to figure out what feels good to you what you believe in what you support and go that route so if there's anybody that's making you feel insignificant so whether that's someone showing you like the perfect life that you feel like you should attain and it's getting to a point where it feels destructive to you or if it's someone that's telling you you're not good enough right there's a lot of those accounts out there that are very much like you know you can't wean off animal products it's all or nothing and you know i, I don't think there's a wrong way to do your activism right like different things connect with different people but if you have someone that's saying these things and it's getting to you in a way that makes you feel like i don't want to do this anymore like i i give up i'm not interested it's too extreme or too crude unfollow unplug right like you got to do those things to take care of you and follow those people that help you instead of uh pull you down right and everybody has a different message that they connect with and they feel really good about so you just got to pick what that message is for you and not let the other stuff cloud in and add to that overwhelm so hope is saying that her nephew and his wife are vegetarian and even though she's vegan they concentrate on their common goals and let the rest go i figure if we don't alienate them then if they never if they ever have questions they can come yeah and i think that's a great way to do it a great way to deal with people um, in general you know I try to kind of it's not that I don't talk about it I am more than happy to talk about it with somebody but I don't bring it up um, you know if I have to say like oh uh, no thanks like I don't eat that and they start digging into it and, you know a stranger sure I'll say I'm vegan or no thanks right but I don't really bring it up I don't go up to them and be like I can't believe you're having turkey tonight do you understand what they do to turkeys and this is what happens and this is the life and here's some footage and there are some that, that do that and that maybe is effective for street outreach and different things but it's not great for you feeling good and them feeling good and being that resource so i'd rather have that laid back approach i'm happy to answer somebody's question if they want to know more and they want to know details, I'll get into it with them and I'll explain it. But in my experience, I kind of just go with what they want and what they're comfortable with. And then the next time I see them, they tend to have another couple questions. And then the next time I see them, there's a few more and it starts to build. And then, you know, they'll be like, oh, I gave up dairy or I gave up this. I gave up gelatin. I have a, one friend who gave up gelatin after understanding what it was and having those questions and that exposure and understanding that there were, were alternatives. So definitely um, that, that common ground, common goals is a good thing. And that's something that may be also helpful for avoiding burnout, right? If you're someone that's new to veganism or considering veganism, um, following those people that really just want to lead by example and talk about the issues 
and educate, but not in a way that is meant to bring you down or that maybe even it unintentionally brings you down is important. So that kind of all blends into like that perfectionism. And I think there's so much um, worry about having to be this certain level and to be a certain perfect vegan, right? A lot of people go vegan and won't call themselves vegan because they're scared. They're scared that they're gonna do something that's not vegan enough and they're gonna get called out. And they're not really accepted by the vegan community and they're not really accepted by, uh, you know, those that eat the standard American diet. And they're kind of in this weird middle ground without a home and they're living in fear of the opinions of the lifestyle that they came from, their friends that maybe are eating a more normal diet and those that are eating like them because they are scared of that label and they're scared of like going into to that. So it's not a good place to be. Don't be perfect, right? Like make the best choices you can in the moment. And if you mess up, that's okay. You know, you can say, yeah, you're right. I, I messed up. I know now and I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna make a better choice in the future. So I think that's a really important attitude to have. Um, and I think creating those boundaries too between those that are close to you is important. So if you have somebody that thinks it's really funny to, you know, point out your vegan and make all these jokes and talk down to you. And sometimes those things, you know, not that you're asking for them, but they can be a learned behavior, right? If you are like, mm, yeah, and like kind of are really shy and like, don't get into it. You're in a sense, you know, they're, they're going, oh, okay, well, this is fine. And I'm not telling you, you know, to get a fight with your uncle and at Thanksgiving. I'm just saying that those that are around you, it's important to have conversations and say, like, I know this is all, you know, good fun for you, but it's upsetting to me. Like, this isn't okay. Like, you can't keep talking to me like this and kind of setting up some of those boundaries. And that might look different in different ways, but you got to put them there. And in the beginning can be really hard, but I would suggest just going like a little bit further and being a little bit more confident in yourself and what you believe in. And eventually you'll kind of get to a point where you, you need to make a decision about, you know, speaking with people and saying, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I believe and it's really important to me and you need to respect that and you do you and I'm gonna do me type stuff. And if you don't do that, and you kind of just let people dig into you and go, I don't know why you're, you're still doing that stuff and that's stupid and why don't you just have a bite or one piece isn't gonna hurt you or why don't you take a cheat day and that is just coming at you. Um, you're gonna not feel good. And these people, the more that they do it and the more that they continue to do this to you, the more normal and acceptable it seems to them. So set boundaries with those that are close to you and again, in your online world, right? Like create that, whether that's unplugging, unfollowing, picking who you let into kind of your ecosystem. Um, another great thing to do is to work on instead of, you know, like this per perfect vegan, is to instead work on yourself, like your self care and your self worth, right? Like if you really wanna further some causes, I start with, with you, right? Like you don't need to be uh, you know, down there at, with the, the pig trucks, like I'd love to go and see them one day, but you don't need to be down there every day. And also at all the protests for like feminism and uh, at all the environmental con, you know, conferences and like doing everything for other people and for like outside sources of not reassurance, but like, you know, like you don't need to do that to be good, right? Like you can have your own path and your own journey. And I would focus very much on trying to get your voice and making sure you understand your voice. So working on that like self-development and self-improvement also helps you put in those boundaries and make those choices that are really aligned with what you believe and how you feel. And if you're doing that, your risk of being burnt out and your risk of being overwhelmed or drained isn't going to be the same. You're going to feel better overall. So I 
hope that was helpful. If there's more questions that you have, or like I was saying earlier, if there's something that you feel like I missed, or I don't know, got completely wrong, tell me off. <laughs> we'll, you know, boundaries are good, but I'm happy to have like a discussion, right? If you feel like there's something that should be handled differently, maybe there's someone else that thinks similar, right? And you can find that person that you're meant to connect with and you're meant to like throw ideas off of and build that community to really work together and feel good. So um, I'm going to sign off. If you guys, if this webcam was better than the computer one, let me know and I'll keep using it in the next weeks. And on Monday, I'll throw out a new poll. So have a good night and I'll see you later. Bye.